Hi there, I'm Eitan, and welcome back to Wix Wiz. This is the second video in this week's series about repeaters, my favorite element in Wix. And today we're going to be talking about how to populate the repeater with data using Velo. This data can come either from a Wix collection using Wix query or from an external API. But either way, we're going to learn how to channel that data into the repeater to create something like this or even something more elaborate using the two main methods of a repeater, which is on item ready and for each item. So let's get started. So as I said, today we're going to be taking a deeper jump into repeaters. And this is our setup from the first video where I talked about the basics of connecting a repeater to a collection with a data set. In this video, as I said, we will be doing it using Velo. So our first step will be to, of course, turn dev mode on. And we are going to want to make sure that our repeater is not connected to our data set anymore. In order to do that, we're going to go over here and click on our repeater. Make sure our repeater is, whoops, make sure our repeater is selected. And then where it says here connected to data, we are just going to click choose and this will disconnect our repeater from the data and you can see here that all of our elements have reverted to their default now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to remove some of these items because when you are populating a repeater with data you don't need all of the items you only really need one and wix will create the amount of items that you need based on the data this is true also when it's connected to a data set. So I personally like to really just delete all the items until I have one left. You can choose to do it how you want. If it helps you visualize your website a little better, if you have several items, then that's great. For me, it's easier to just use one item. Now what we're gonna do is just do some slight editing. So I'm gonna get rid of this image. And in this demonstration, we are going to have two text boxes. So I'm going to go ahead and click Add Element and add one more text box to our repeater. Excellent. So the next thing we need to do is organize and get our data. So first of all, I'm going to start off with just some raw data that I will be putting here in the code. A more realistic situation would be to one, either query a Wix data set for the data or to get our data from an external API. I have a series of videos on each of these topics, which I recommend you check out if you are new to this. I am going to be assuming that you know some basic Velo and some basic things about Wix query. I won't expect you to know how to get data from an external API, but the demonstration I'm doing now should demonstrate how to use that data once you get it and populate a repeater with it. So right over here is our Velo reference for repeaters. And there are several things here that we are going to be touching on today. First, I want to just take this static data because they conveniently created it for us. And I'm going to paste it right here inside of our on ready function. And let's just take a look at this static data because it's quite important. So you can see here that it is an array. And that is how all the data that you are using for a repeater should be structured. And you can see that within this array, there are objects. Inside of each of, each of these objects, there is an ID, which is underscore ID with a value that is a string. And each of these IDs is unique. Okay, these are the three things that are critical when you are structuring your data for a repeater. If you are querying a Wix data set, your data should already look like this because that is how Wix query returns a query with an array of objects, which each one has a unique string ID, which is labeled in this manner. If you are getting your data from somewhere else, you are going to need to make sure that you are reformatting your data and you are structuring it in this way. Now, in order to pass this data into our repeater, we need to use one very simple line of code. 
before I do that, I am going to change the name of the repeater to my repeater. And I'm going to select, let me just zoom in here so you can see a little better. I'm going to select that element here. So that's my repeater dot data equals static data. And that is the only line that you need in order to pass data to the repeater. But there is a caveat. You also need to tell the repeater what to do once it receives data. So this is a generic set of rules that you are telling the repeater, OK, when you receive new data, I want you to do such and such. And that is this on item ready method. So let's go over here and take a look at the documentation. So on item ready uh, takes a callback function, which has three parameters, item, item data, and index. And now I'm going to talk about what each one of those is. So let's go back to our code. And before I pass the data to our repeater, I'm going to set up the on item ready for the repeater. So my repeater dot on item ready. And here we have a callback function, which has item, item data, and index. Often I find that I do not need the index when I am populating my repeater with data. So you can actually not pass in the index if you don't need it. In this demonstration, I will just because it is an option. Next, we tell the items or the elements in the repeater how to behave once new data is passed in. Before we do that, I'm just going to go ahead and rename the elements inside of our repeater. So I'm going to call this one language. And I'm going to call the bottom one greeting. Now we can tell our repeater how to behave when it gets data. So in order to understand this, we have to first understand this item data parameter. So item data is essentially each one of these objects is one set of item data. And our repeater is made up of an array of these item data objects. So when I pass the data in, each one of these lines becomes an item data object. Our item is a special selector. So you know that we have the dollar sign W for selecting our generic elements on a Wix website. And item will specify the behavior for an individual element within a repeater and make sure that it behaves based on the item data and the instructions that we give it. So for example, if I select item, and I select language, and I say dot text should be equal to item data dot. And here we have language, so I'm going to say language. Then when we load our website, each item will be populated with the respective language of the item data. And you will see that the repeater will have six items because we have six items here inside of the static, static data. So let me go ahead and just show you what that looks like. So I'm going to go into preview mode. And you can see that what I expected did not happen. It says my first item, my first item, and that's not what I wanted. So let's go ahead and do some debugging. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and click this right over here. And you can see that this connected to data little squiggly snake is still green. OK, so it's still getting the data from the data set. And I actually had a hunch that this was hap going to happen. And I wanted to show it to you because it happens to me all the time when I am transferring between a repeater that was connected to a data set and my Velo code. This is a situation that actually happens to me quite often. And this is a bug that happens to me quite often. So I just wanted to highlight it to you. And I'm just going to click here. And we have to make sure that our items are 
not connected to data set data, because if they are, then that will take precedence over the Velo code. Okay, so data sets come first, Velo code comes second. And now if I head back into preview mode, then you will see that we are actually getting each of the languages. So each item is getting the language from the item data. Okay, and we can change also our item for a greeting. I want to say dot text, and this will be equal to item data dot greeting. And if we head into preview mode, then you'll see that now both our language and our greeting is set. So you can already see the convenience of using something like this on your website, because if you were to build this by hand, you would have to go in and edit each and every single text box with the respective language and greeting, and it would take a lot of time and it would be very hard to change. But this is a very simple way to design one thing and then just use the data to populate it. Now I'm gonna just demonstrate some more aspects of this on item ready function. So I wanna show you two things. One is what this index is. So the index is just the index of the item data inside of the array. So the index of this one would be zero because arrays start at an index of zero, and then we'd have one, two, etc. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the index after the language so that the index will show on the. You know what? Let's add it before just so that it's a little, <laughs> it's a little nicer. So I'm going to go ahead here. I'm going to say index. And then I'm going to go plus. Okay, so I'm creating a string here with first our index and then a colon and then our actual language. And in the greeting, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this item and I'm going to replace it with our generic W. And the reason I'm doing this is just to demonstrate what would happen because this actually can happen quite often that you're typing out the on ready function and you mistake the item for the W. So this will kind of help you identify that bug in advance. So I'm going to go ahead and preview. And now you can see that all of these are with the index beforehand. So we have 0, 1, 2, etc. And all of the greetings are the last one, which was our Ukrainian greeting. Okay, so when we do a W instead of an item, essentially, we are, let me go back to the editor so I can explain this with the code. What we are doing is we're saying, this is a function that's running in a loop. Okay, so we're essentially running it. And then it's saying, okay, change the greetings all to the English greeting, and then change them all to the French greeting and change them all to the Japanese greeting. And then at the end, it says change them all to the Ukrainian greeting. And that's what we see when our website loads up. But if we change this to item, and it essentially says, okay, when you're running the function for the first time, then put it with the first greeting. When you're running the function for the second time, put it with the second greeting. Okay, so this is essentially a loop that's running for each of our uh, items in the repeater. So that's the basics of setting up a repeater with uh, data. Again, this data can come from a Wix collection. It can come from external data through an external API. And now I just want to touch on some slightly more advanced things regarding using Velo to manage your repeaters. So if we head over here to the documentation, we see that we also have a, another method here, which is for each item. And this, uh, if you read here the description, it's basically a function that runs on all of the repeaters items and executes that function for each item. So we can basically change the items based on a certain rule, uh, even after they're populated with data. So let's go ahead and demonstrate what that would look like. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use this next button. I'm gonna disconnect it from our data. And 
I'm just going to change it to be our do something button. Okay, and I'm going to make this do something with the repeater. Let's change the text to do something. And what we're going to do is create a new function. I'm going to call it do something. I'm being very original with my naming today. And this is going to be a function which runs our for each item on the repeater. So I'm going to say my repeater dot for each item. And here again, we can pass in item, item data, and index. And now we can give it a new command for something to do to our repeater. So for example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy over this line from the language. And I'm going to create a new variable up here. I'm going to call it let counter. This is just really a very simple demonstration. And then when we do something, you know, let's say let counter equals zero. And then I'm going to say counter plus plus, so add one to counter. And then this will be index plus counter. Put it in. That should be hmm. interesting. I wonder if it'll treat it. Okay, I think that should add the two numbers together. Uh, if not, we'll see. Uh, so we'll have our index, so it'll start off at zero, and then our counter will be one, so it'll start off at one. And then hopefully each time we click the button, let's just add in our event listener for click. So do something button dot on click. And then actually we don't need to put in an entire callback function. We can just call the do something function. So ideally each time we click the do something button, the indexes that we set up for the repeater should all go up by one. So let's test it out. So I'm going to go into preview mode. And you can see that we start off with the on item ready. So that's zero, one, two, etc. And now if I click the do something button, then these all went up by one. So now we have one English, two French, and I click do something again. And it didn't change. Okay, so I had expected it to change there. Let's go back to the editor. And... Ah, so here's here's where my problem is. So I put the counter outside of the do something function. This needs to be inside the do something function. So I'm going to go ahead and preview that again. And now we see we're starting from zero again. And now if I click do something, everything jumped by one, do something, jumps again, do something, jumps again. Okay, so that is how we can change the data in our repeater manually after we've populated the repeater using the for each item method. And with that, I'm going to wrap up this second part of our repeater tutorial. I hope you found it informative. If you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.